Hello, and welcome to the Virtual AI Summit New York. My name is Maris Bogovici. I'm a Chief Solutions Architect in the Financial Services team at Red Hat. And in this session, I will share Red Hat's experience of helping financial institutions build applications, and in particular, discuss several strategies to help you maximize the return on your investment in, the, in artificial intelligence and machine learning. It is important to understand the driver for these changes because financial institutions have been early adopters of AI and it's not a new topic for them. Uh, existing data has been used for, for a long time to improve existing products and to devise algorithms uh, that power specific bank functions, especially on the back end, especially in the um, capital markets area or uh, risk assessment or even fraud. What is really changing is that banks and financial institutions uh, find new ways to increase the efficiency of their operations. Um, aspects like just-in-time lending, automated compliance and reporting, improved loan default prediction, just make the bank operations uh, faster, quicker, better, and they, they help um, you know, sell their customers with the same products, but working so much better. At the other end of the spectrum, there's experimentation. Financial institutions create new business models based on intelligent decision-making and insights derived from data, personalized incentives and rewards, client advisories, personalized insights for investment. So this way they create, they, they can create new value on a new business and serve their customers better through new products. As a combination of the two, AI becomes gradually interwoven in all the areas of operation and it becomes an integral part of a financial institution's function uh, in areas like payments or omnichannel. So um, as it becomes a, a core functionality, functions related to AI start being shared um, across or outside the organization. Um, you know, thinking about prediction as a service, thinking about um, you know, sharing um, you know, the expertise of building AI systems as a center of excellence. So this ubiquity of AI is also uh, something that uh, AI leaders have to, to take into account. All this is supported by a number of, of emerging technological trends um, that help support implementing these AI solutions. Uh, commodity hardware provides, uh, you know, simpler and more cost efficient ways to get the compute power that you need. You don't need a larger, bigger computer when you can get a bunch of smaller, cheaper ones. Specialized hardware um, for AI ML also uh, helps accelerate innovation. And usually uh, the solutions that we see built are a combination of the two, commodity and specialized. Cloud platforms, on the other hand, provide the means for elastically scaling and allocating resources on demand for resource intensive workloads without the need for the massive investment, for example, for being, building a, a larger data center that starts, that is largely uh, unutilized. And open source uh, offers companies freedom to innovate and to you know, tap into the power of communities um, to create new and better tools. Uh, to implement an analytics and machine learning workflows. And in fact, um, the majority of these new tools, the majority of the, uh, of the emerging software in the machine learning space that's powering AI initiatives comes from the open source environment and allows a great degree of flexibility uh, to customers to pick and choose what they need to implement what they need. So armed with these, like, armed with these new capabilities, um, there is a, these, they can implement solutions uh, that meet certain business uh, viability objectives, like agility solutions, but must allow for easy and rapid change to deal with changes in market conditions uh, or consumer preferences, or just try out new things. They must be deployed at scale. As we, <clears throat> as, as I mentioned earlier, these solutions tend to become ubiquitous. So. Once they're deployed in environments that, for example, um, uh, are part of, uh, uh, of uh, interaction channels like web and mobile and deal with an increased number of users, they also need to be able to scale with increased usage. And you know, when these functions, for example, become supporting functions for the entire enterprise, again, they, they are facing this, this increase in, in, uh, in usage, which demands this scalability. And finally, companies must balance the value that they create 
with the cost of implementing uh, and operating these new solutions. So cost of effectiveness is a big part of the story. Now, financial institutions also must meet specific standards and obligations, which are kind of the fourth driving factor uh, when we discuss these solutions. Um, they must have the, they must be solutions must be secure. And it is important to notice that machine learning models and training data become part of the attack surface of the solution, compromising a fraud detection model, for example, can create a great loss at the bank, um, especially if it goes undetected. Reliability is important. Uh, being able to, to run these large scale workloads um, is a critical part of actually building machine learning models, but also once they're deployed, these models must be highly available as they become critical business functions. And deploying your versions to production must be performed with minimal downtime, ideally no downtime. Finally, AIML provides solutions to uh, complex regulatory requirement, requirements and are subject to regulatory scrutiny. Right? Um, so they must comply with, uh, they must meet certain security criteria as we've seen, but also comply with data access and privacy regulations and meet the transparency criteria set by regulator. What we'll talk about next is how, uh, how Red Hat sees and how, how Red Hat's experience of helping, uh, help, helping financial institutions uh, deal with these four driving forces uh, and implement platforms that allow them to take advantage of the business opportunities uh, while leveraging uh, technical advances in an environment that meets the uh, viability criteria and also is compatible with, um, with, the, um, with the regulatory uh, requirements in which they have to function. So in order to move forward, it is often, uh, it is often noticed that um, implementing AI solutions in financial institutions faces a number of challenges, uh, which create and always uh, create a, uh, you know, which make uh, put into question the return of investment of, of, uh, of such solutions, because they're typically seen as, you know, requiring a lot of resources, requiring a lot of, in, uh, of, of investment, and very often not delivering on, on the promise. And in implementing such solutions, um, you know, the AI leaders and their teams must, you know, clear a number of hurdles. The, you know, the, the, the first one is data access. You know, finding and preparing quality data is difficult, especially when regulatory constraints restrict data access. So this is something that, um, you know, companies have to consider a workaround. But also uh, finding talent and using efficiently that talent, especially when, um, teams do not collaborate well with each other is another problem. So solutions are very often hard to implement due to slow manual and siloed operations. And this leads to models, for example, becoming outdated by the time they reach production. So they do not deliver on their business value. Accelerating that process is a critical part here. This happens very often due to either, uh, you know, the inavailability of infrastructure of software for data scientists, for example, to conduct their experiments or to find finding the resources that uh, developers need to, to incorporate these models into production. And ultimately, making sure that uh, all these processes are transparent and easy to assess by regulators and address uh, ethical concerns such as bias. The observation here, and this is uh, from a, uh, this is a diagram um, from a well-known paper on um, machine learning and its impact in, in, in building applications is that the building the model and training the model is just a small part of building an intelligent applications. Um, the, um, usually um, there is a much larger, a model is part of a much larger distributed solution that, in, that incorporates a number of supporting uh, activities and tasks. And this can be easily seen in this diagram that um, you know that illustrates I'm, I'm a solution for for building uh, an anti money laundering um, architecture. It is Red Hat's architecture for for uh, for building uh, for anti money laundering that illustrates how artificial intelligence and machine learning can be combined 
with other functionalities in, the, in, in a bank uh, in a modular event-driven fashion that leverages uh, data from a variety of data sources um, to produce, uh, to build an, uh, a cohesive holistic solution, as opposed to, let's say, uh, a monolithic end-to-end, uh, -end, one size fits all type of approach. But what's important here is that the, while the, uh, while the anti-money laundering, the, the um, <clears throat> machine learning uh, capabilities are a critical part uh, of supporting functionality such as uh, know your customer or transaction monitoring, it needs to be integrated in a larger, in a larger uh, uh, landscape where, um, um, you know, the, uh, where other aspects like data integration, case management, or um, um, analytics exist. So that is essentially a requirement, translates into a requirement for collaboration between different teams that are part of this process. Data engineers, data scientists, and application developers. Data engineers essentially are, are more focused on collecting the data, transforming, and um, uh, preparing it for data scientists who analyze, extract the features, build models, and monitor them. And then application developers are using these models to build intelligent applications to build the uh, the business solution around them. Um, you know, interfaces, um, APIs, um, management tools. So all these teams must work with each other seamlessly. And what we see in typical machine learning workflows, especially when it comes down to <clears throat> getting the work of data scientists. Um, up to production. This is a classic um, workflow for, for performing machine learning tasks. We typically see two big bottlenecks in this process. One deals with building discovery environments. Um, simply uh, getting, simply giving data, giving, giving, <clears throat> giving data scientists access to tools, uh, to the tools that they need, to the libraries that they need, is uh, without the need to, to file IT tickets is usually a problem. So moving from the mindset of everyone does their work on their own laptop um, and then somehow shares their results to a mindset where they have a platform through which they collaborate is a big, is a big change here. And the other one, of course, me is concerned with mo moving these models into production, just kind of throwing notebooks over the wall is not, is not a recipe for success. So uh, integrated uh, build pipelines that you know, take the, uh, the results of, of the earlier group and translate it into uh, seamlessly working services, I think is an important part. And again, these, you know, these kind of bottlenecks of solutions here share a number of, of, of common traits. Um, there is a need to have reproducible environments uh, what worked on my machine needs to work in the cloud, needs to work in the, um, in the public cloud as well, um, or in my data center, so a different environment. Uh, all of them need access to specialized hardware. Um, you know, in the case, for example, of production deployments, there's also a requirement to uh, monitor against uh, degradation and drift. So what's the solution for addressing these, uh, these pain points, right? How's the... Uh, how do we see this happening and how, um, how financial institutions have been successfully implementing such workflows? Essentially building a single workflow that unites the multiple personas, recognizes the needs, their different needs, and provides self-service access to tools and data and minimizes the burden of the IT operations people that have to support it. And the way this workflow takes place is through this conceptual architecture for operationalizing AI. Um, that we are proposing and we have used for successfully helping customers um, you know, build and accelerate the AI initiatives, as you will see later. At the top, essentially at the top of this architecture, you see the project life cycle with the business goals, like going from the setting of the business goals to developing the machine learning model, to implementing applications and inference and monitoring and retraining models as needed. In order to execute this process, in order to support it, you need a machine learning software tool chain. 
that consists of you know specialized libraries, tools like TensorFlow and Spark and Jupyter Notebooks, Python, you know Selden, uh, a few other, um, and you can recognize that you know all of them are are essentially open source tools. So this is kind of coming back to the uh, conversation on on the power of open source as a as a catalyst for these types of environments. So how do you get access to them and, and use it in a seamless um, fashion is, is the key question. Now, also there is a need to have these uh, access to a variety of data sources, databases, SQL, NoSQL, data lakes, um, data pipelines that provide the data for, for these, um, uh, for the data scientists to transform and later on provide the access to data for, um, for inference. So all the all of them, there is important like having a single platform on these on which these two these components can run side by side is critical. So the platform here is is essentially the um, the, the key component that enables the seamless operation of these data pipelines and tools is the hybrid cloud platform is a hybrid cloud platform with salt service capabilities based on containers, Kubernetes, and with, uh, with, DevOps with embedded DevOps practices. Um, I should also add security here, which is like baking in security as part of the, uh, as part of the platform is a, key, uh, is a key way to address the regulatory constraints that financial institutions require. Now, this hybrid cloud platform also provides an abstraction layer for simplifying access to hardware accelerators. Right, like GPUs that help speed up model development and inferencing tasks. And the role of the platform is to make this access to these uh, resources transparent, just as it is to make access to infrastructure as transparent. So offering a consistent experience across on-premises, public clouds, edge locations, um, you know, and can be efficiently managed by IT operations provides a seamless experience and provides this flexibility goal of being able to deploy your models, being able to deploy your workflows whenever you need it in the way that you need it. As I mentioned earlier, one of the foundational blocks of this hybrid cloud platforms is containers that provide the agility, flexibility, portability, and scalability um, for data scientists to build and develop models and to, for developers to code software applications powered by these models. So of course, um, <clears throat> the um, you know deploying and creating Deploying new applications and getting access to resources requires them to be agile um, and not waiting, for example, for, for uh, a ticket to IT in order to, to deploy the task. Also, containers means containerization means that uh, applications with different profiles and different um, uh, of a different nature, like your Java application that uh, accesses a model, and for example, the Python application that embeds the model run the same way on, on the platform. They also provide portability, so the ability to uh, share and deploy models consistently across the, uh, across in, in the different target environments. Um, you know, the ability to provision environments as needed and when needed. And finally, uh, being able to, uh, like aspects like scalability and self-healing and high availability uh, means that, um, you know, this Kubernetes um, provides this natively for, for containerized applications. So, um, and, you know, you can, you can easily scale your applications in a declarative fashion as managed by Kubernetes. So this is essentially captured in the, uh, in Red Hat's uh, Kubernetes powered Red Hat OpenShift container platform that is the foundational tool that helps accelerating the AML lifecycle. So OpenShift, of course, um, you know, provides, uh, simplifies the debug, deployment, scaling, and lifecycle management of containerized AML tools, right? And that uh, um, like H2OAI, Starburst, Presto, Selden, and ensures high availability and faster time to value, and also provides access, as I, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, to hard hardware accelerators like NVIDIA GPUs. So it means that it acts as it acts as the uh, as the glue between this specialized software and the underlying capabilities. It also provides 
consistency and portability, offering uh, consistency of day one and day two operations uh, across the data center, edge, and public clouds. So machine learning um, and application development workflows are portable across different environments. And also, it extends the value of DevOps uh, to the entire machine learning lifecycle, enabling collaboration between different teams. <clears throat> Finally, it is a hybrid, it's a fully integrated hybrid cloud platform that includes key capabilities like monitoring, automation, uh, DevOps tool chain, completely built on open source projects. This helps drive innovation without vendor lock-in. Now, to illustrate this and to illustrate how this comes into, how this happens in practice, I'm using a case study uh, based on uh, um, you know, and a successful implementation of such an, of an AI platform at the Royal Bank of Canada. The Royal Bank of Canada is, is, a, uh, is a top global bank. Um, it is um, a, you know, it is, it handles massive amounts of data, easily 10 billion new clients interactions per month. Um, it, is, it has identified artificial intelligence and, and using machine learning as a critical business capability. Um, going so far as to create its own research center um, for, for, for AI ML called uh, Borealis AI. The challenge that the Royal Bank of Canada had was that AML projects took up to two months to get off the ground. So they couldn't really see the result of the investment because the getting them into production took too long. So you know, there were a number of, of, of <clears throat> symptoms of that, you know, workflow, workload or orchestration and self-service access to GPU was slow. Uh, you know, it was hard to build uh, platforms, <clears throat> um, you know, the, the actual applications. And this, of course, security and compliance requirements were hard to meet. The goal in the end was to build an AI platform that could serve its, you know, more than 100 um, AI developers and engineers help them complete projects faster, but most importantly, adopt a DevOps culture and to leverage cloud uh, to improve efficiency and application release cycles. And the solution essentially was to use Red Hat OpenShift to build this platform in collaboration uh, with NVIDIA. So this is another great story of how Red Hat in collaboration with its partners uh, helps deliver um, uh, value for, for, for customers and help them accelerate uh, their processes. Uh, it relied on a few things that we kind of spoke earlier, uh, continuization of machine learning applications and services, building a private a platform for banks AIML center, a unified platform to which the different teams that are part of the bank can collaborate. And of course, uh, you know, it simplifies access to hardware uh, for the NVIDIA through the NVIDIA operator. The results are you know, speak for themselves. More than a thousand models have been deployed. Experiments run 10 times as fast. Models take days to build instead of, of months. And the performance of the system is, uh, uh, is great. It, it can process 13 million records in less than 20 minutes. So this not only kind of helped uh, RBC to meet its, uh, its goals, but it also set RBC on a path that uh, it, where it's able to, when it's thinking to leverage AI in customer facing applications as well. So this story has not only helped RBC meet its goals, but actually uh, it, it sets the path for future success. In summary, what we talked about here today is about how financial institutions um, that you know, have been have a long-standing experience of using data-driven processes are launching new AI initiatives. And in order to be successful with these initiatives, in order to leverage, like to meet the business opportunities to, to take advantage of the technological advantage and to meet the business objectives and, and regulatory obligations, they need to build, build a platform that allows self-service access to tools and data and reduces the operational IT burden. Such a platform is provided by Red Hat OpenShift uh, that provides container and hybrid cloud-based capabilities that provide the, the, the flexibility, reliability, and security required by financial services environments. 
And it, as an example, you've seen how top financial institutions like RBC have accelerated the adoption of AI and can easily launch new initiatives creating value for the business. I will end with a number of resources, uh, a number of hybrid cloud success stories from Red Hat, uh, a bunch of reference architectures of, uh, for the use of artificial intelligence in a financial uh, institutional setting, um, like the architecture for money laundering, which I that I've spoken about earlier, and you know, and also an ebook for um, um, an example of operationalizing AI into production. With that, I would like to thank you for attending this presentation and to wish you a uh, to enjoy the conference.